Israel's recent attacks on the West Bank flew in the face of international opinion. And while the world repeatedly called for Israel to withdraw, Prime Minister Ariel Sharon was manoeuvring behind the scenes to make sure the campaign continued. Sharon effectively sidelined his major coalition partner, the Labour Party. They objected to the reoccupation of the West Bank. To make sure the military campaign would be finished to his satisfaction, Sharon brought in this man, Effie Etam. Etam is a hardline reservist general and the rising star of the far right in Israel. He wants to see the Palestinian Authority, the PA, destroyed. And that's almost complete. The PA is not an innocent civilian authority. We must say that also very clear. It's the greatest terror consortium in the world. For the moment, Effie Etam is content with the military's progress. Etam was never a supporter of the Oslo peace process. And he now wants to move on to the next phase of his plan, expelling the Palestinian leadership. We, we will have to take this leadership out of the area. Until they are here, until Arafat is here, no chance for any new leadership to, to, to come up. Uh, so, the, yeah. so this is the first thing we've got to do, to get rid of him. So when you take him, you, you, just, you just take him out of the country? Or? Yes, yes, that's what we've got to do, mm -hmm. to take him out of the country and to make sure that the international uh, community will understand that he's not a partner anymore. FEA Tam's appointment as a minister met with outrage by Labour members and opposition parties. His sudden rise to power meant Labour had just lost their influence and Sharon had moved his government further to the right. FEA Tam's National Religious Party, holding only five seats, was now in Sharon's unity government, and A. Tam himself was given a place in Sharon's inner circle, the Security Cabinet. Labour leader and Defence Minister Ben Eliezer and Labour stalwart and Foreign Affairs Minister Shimon Perez effectively lost their power in the Cabinet. We, we thought that it's a great mistake of Mr. Sharon. Number one, Mr. Itam just entered politics. He never been a member of Knesset. He was never elected. He don't have that kind of experience. He just came out of the army. As an army man, the Israelis have lionized Effie Etam for his role in freeing these Israeli hostages from Entebbe in Uganda in 1976 and his service in Lebanon in 1982. But his opponents say he went too far in the first intifada of 1987. A Tam was charged with giving illegal orders to his soldiers to break the bones of Palestinian protesters. Four soldiers were convicted of assault, but A Tam was cleared of any offence. He is not clean. When you talk, you talk about somebody who uh, acts in a violent way against civilians, I don't think that he should be part in our uh, cabinet. No base for this uh, for these uh, allegations because uh, I mean you can see my record. Uh, since the first intifada, I was promoted uh, four times. I became a full full general in the IDF. Uh, they brought it to court three four times, and court, including the Supreme Court of Justice, just rolled them out of the hole, telling them you are coming without clean hands, it's all political uh, manipulation. When the tanks rolled into the West Bank, Etam was happy. His vision was becoming a reality. Etam does not believe in a Palestinian state and plans to reoccupy all of the West Bank and Gaza. When all Palestinian militants have been rooted out, he's prepared to offer the Palestinians some autonomy but no democratic rights. But this is only the first stage of Etam's grand plan for the Palestinians. 
we saw what happened. With 3,000 rifles, it became uh, 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 an, illegal, an illegal army of terror, and we cannot allow them to vote to our parliament, because that will undermine uh, the uh, Jewish majority in Israel, and Jewish majority is a precondition for what we believe should be a Jewish state. What has shocked moderate Israeli politicians is Atam's support for transfer, the euphemism for removing Palestinians from their homelands in the West Bank and Gaza and relocating them to Jordan or Egypt. He outlined his views to a leading Israeli university. The Israeli Defence Force can tomorrow conquer Judea, Samaria and the Gaza Strip and expel the population there overnight. It's not a problem to do this. We have a problem of having the will to do this. As a nation, we are inhibited. Now he is a minister, Atam says he rejects the idea of transfer as morally repugnant. History tells him that's precisely what the Nazis did to the Jews, but he still believes the Palestinians have to go. Solving the problem is to offer the Palestinians a state which will be combined out of Gaza and Sinai deserts. Sinai is the only uh, significant reservoir of land we have in this region. Egypt doesn't need it, not for settlements, not for defense, uh, only a few Bedouins roaming there, and it's a very huge area, four times bigger than Israel with all the occupied territories. So this, this must be a kind of cooperation between Israel, America, uh, Egyptians, and the international community. And I don't see any reason. Why and how the Egyptians were enjoying uh, such a massive Western support in money and, 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 and military aid, why don't they offer, or why shouldn't they offer, Sinai as, as, a, as, a, as a piece of land which is so empty and really can allow to solve the problem peacefully? His ideology, his ideas, we resent them, we against them, we oppose them, we don't like them, and we cannot, from my point of view, participate in any government that he's part of. In protest at Atam's sudden rise to power and his extremist views, Labour says it will leave the Sharon government. So when will you leave the government? I hope as soon as possible. I hope as soon as possible. And when does that mean, do you think? I mean, what I have does no that idea. Happen? I have no idea. I, I, I hope that... I mean, we have uh, reasons to, to live, I think, daily reasons to live. The question is when our leaders, mainly Shimon Peres and Benjamin Ben Eliezer, will get to the point that they must live. No, they will not come out of the unity government because me and my, my party came into the government. It's, it's rubbish. Uh, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's an area which psychiatrists must really uh, uh, explore. Uh, you know, I'm not that good in uh, in exploration of, of, of hatred, uh, especially not hatred amongst brothers, amongst, uh, amongst Jews. Effie Atum backs Israel's messianic Zionists. They are a minority driven by a biblical vision. They believe the Messiah will only return when every inch of the West Bank, a land they call Judea and Samaria, has been settled by the Jews. Central to their belief is the Jews' first temple needs to be rebuilt on the Temple Mount. This means destroying the Al-Aqsa Mosque, Islam's third holiest site. And he's bringing God with him into politics. And I would say that, that this is not what the Israelis and Palestinians and Arabs need today, the, the strong involvement of God. This is a political conflict uh, on, on politics and on ma mainly on an issue of land. And I think that the introduction of religion and God into this conflict is counterproductive. And if it um, represents this, this, this divine side of, of bringing uh, uh, religion into politics, I think it's very, very dangerous. In the face of an unprecedented number of Palestinian suicide bombers, many Israelis are turning to ATAM, 
a strong man for challenging times. The majority see his ideas as extreme, but he is gaining popularity. 46% of people recently polled supported the idea of transfer. Israelis are so disappointed by, by uh, conventional politics that they're looking for, for different solutions. And then comes somebody uh, who represents himself as a strong believer in God and somebody who will, uh, who will really enhance the, the uh, coming of Messiah. Many Israelis are today are ready to, to, uh, to consider uh, very strange ideas. Uh, even such ideas like the Messiah. So I would say that he comes in a very low point in Israeli politics and in, uh, uh, in the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians. And within this framework of, of death and despair, such people uh, can, can have a lot of support. The appointment of Efi Eitam means extremism is winning in Israel as it is on the Palestinian side. If Labor walks out of the unity government, it will take any hope of a negotiated political settlement with it. And Atam's opponents fear Israel will only see more death and destruction. Because if we won't do anything right now, politically, I'm, I'm talking about politically, the terror will rise again in a week time or two weeks time or three weeks time. It's a matter of time. So we have to be in that sense wise and, and try to prevent it by political means. I, I would say that I am optimistic about the long run, but pessimistic about the short run. But, uh, but I don't think anybody knows what's going to happen.